Well, West Tigers fans, we packed out Campbelltown Stadium. It was a beautiful Sunday afternoon in the sun. And, of course, the West Tigers came out and had their worst game of the season. Let's talk about it. Some West Tigers fan therapy on another episode of the West Life Podcast. Welcome into another episode of the West Life Podcast. I am your host, Josh Barnett. Please give us a follow at West Life Pod on Instagram and Twitter. We are presented every single week, twice a week, by Holman Barnes Group. Big thank you again to Holman Barnes Group, including West Ashfield, supporting the show this year. And if you would like to find everything we do including our youtube channel which we go live 8 30 twice a week monday wednesdays uh if you go to westtigers.com.au or the the link in our instagram and twitter pages you'll find the link to our youtube pages please give us a subscribe i think we're getting close to 900 we really want to get to 1000 by the end of this season i think we can look there's still 20 weeks left in the season. It's a long, long way to go for the West Tigers this year. So, yeah, let's not get down in the doldrums too much. And, yeah, join us twice a week, every week. And, yeah, give us a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you want to support the show, patreon.com forward slash West Life. We'll get to our beloved Patreon members' comments later in the show, as well as your comments on the form and the boys' Uh, they chose a comment of the week in the rant as well. So let's go to Mr. Bashara coming in from the Red Room. I think he's just getting out of the car park from Campbelltown now after yesterday. Mr. Bashara, um, thank you very much for the lift yesterday. The Toyota Camry was on for about two hours, I think, and it moved about a kilometer, I think. We want more games at Campbelltown and more packed houses. But, yeah, the parking situation, if you do park in the car park, it um, look, it's about 6,000 cars trying to get out one little intersection. So, look, we uh, we had a good chat. and had um, shouts to Brenda Bashara as well, tagging along. Good debrief ourselves on that uh, long, what is that, long drive home. It was a, a long... Uh, 500 meter drive and then a nice cruise down the freeway back to the inner west of Sydney. But how are you this evening, Mr. Bashara? Yeah, I'm well. Thank you, boys. Uh, how are you, Josh, Aaron, everyone out there? Hope you're well. Uh, just quickly, Josh, I think just on behalf of all of us, I just want to uh, send our thoughts and prayers to everyone affected by the Bondi tragedy. Uh, so that definitely put a dampener on, uh, on yesterday and put footy into perspective. Uh, but look, I had a great time with you and Brendan. Uh, Look, it's, I'm pro moving as many games as we can to Campbelltown, you know, hopefully in a redeveloped stadium one day. But I think the reality is whether we're at Acor, Leichhardt, Campbelltown, if you've got a big crowd, you're not getting out of there quickly. So um, I, I just don't think it's going to ever be solved, no matter no matter where the game's at. And if you go to Allianz, you're going to cop the same thing in Moore Park. So, uh, yeah, but look, it was a... It was, a really disappointing day, just given the fact that we'd open up the offices in the MacArthur area, a full crowd, what, first time in 19 years or something, since 2005, and then to have that performance, it was just uncharacteristic of what we've seen uh, for the last month from the West Tigers. Um, I, I expect to have the, have the odd off day occasionally, but just given the circumstances, given how pumped up we w- all were, also, the fact that, you know, we just lost to the team that came 13th and now we we're playing the team that came 16th last year. Uh, and to go down in the way we did, I, I don't think we really tested St George too much. It was just a really disappointing day. Hopefully, the boys can bounce back from it with a few key ins uh, that will be named tomorrow night. But, mm. uh, look, it is what it is. We move on. Uh, we expect the odd bad game, as I just said, uh, but I just didn't expect it yesterday. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, on the Camelton situation, David on the Facebook stream saying 
uh, it's next to a train station, which is true. Lemire Station is right there. But, I mean, look, I have done it before. I've caught the train from Lidcombe Station. It's a Look, it is... I did it by myself. I couldn't imagine doing it with kids. It's, it's a couple of changes. Look, th- first world problems. We're talking about, as you said, Rob, this is just football and definitely first world problems. And yeah, I like, yeah, extend condolences to six families that are going through absolute hell right now after what happened on the weekend. And, but yeah, look, the train. If you're adjacent to on that line, that is pretty easy. But I got the train out to Campbelltown once from Lidcombe and I think I, from 9.30 when the game finished, I don't think I got home till about 1 o'clock in the morning because it was just like there was hardly any trains on. There was track work or something. So a bit scarred from that. But it is true. Uh, who was it? Someone, Cameron said on YouTube, if you park at Minnow Station, that's Minnow, not Minto, uh, train station and catch the train to Lamia. Not a bad tip, that. It's only one one stop down i actually went to um i did when i did catch the train i went to the gym in minnow shouts to snap fitness in minnow did have a workout there before a game once uh mr thompson how are you this evening yeah g'day josh g'day rob g'day everyone listening um i'm pretty good uh obviously a little bit disappointed after what we witnessed yesterday just on the tragic events at Bondi Junction on Saturday, I want to give a huge shout out to whoever it was at the club who decided to hold a second minute silence for for those events yesterday. I thought that was an incredible touch at the game, um, considering what happened and how raw and fresh it, it all was. So, uh, yeah, my condolences to all the families out there who are hurting from what happened on Saturday. But like Rob said, it puts footy in perspective and... Yeah, we're going to get disappointing performances every now and then, but we've got to remember that we are on the right track. We have shown definite signs of improvement this year, and uh, there are going to be better days ahead, that's for sure. Uh, Jason D, he said, if you park your car at Minto, it's a good tip. It won't be there when you get back. So, uh... (laughs) (laughs) look, (laughs) an insurance payout can be handy sometimes. (laughs) Um, speaking of payouts, uh, our beloved uh, supporters, West Ashfield slash Holman Barnes Group, a big thank you. So if you're not heading out to Bathurst on Saturday afternoon, watch it live on the big screen at West Ashfield. Uh, try the new Bellagio restaurant, the Italian, and the Shanghai Knights uh, Chinese dumpling place, which I did so when we played the Dolphins. You can even get the... Um, Get the food takeaway. Saw plenty of pizzas and Chinese succulent Chinese meals being consumed in front of the big screen, so you don't have to dine in the restaurant. Bit of a tip there. So get out to West Ashfield this Saturday afternoon. Might just do that myself, just quietly. On to some news, just a little one. Uh, West Group Macarthur. So as opposed to West Holman Barnes Group. So the West Club out uh, adjacent to Campbelltown Stadium, they're pledging 350 grand to grassroots rugby league. So, Rob, that's that's a fair chunk of money. That's fa- that's fantastic. And obviously, you know, they're, they're right next door to Campbelltown Stadium, so it's good for them, good for us. But look, certainly certainly what we need, uh, you know, Richo keeps talking about that area being the biggest uh, growing area in Australia. And so it's, it's good to have our footprint in there. I, I like I said, I just wish yesterday we'd have put on a much better performance, and you know it would have really been nice for a seven or an eight year old boy or girl to go mm. to that game and be inspired and say I want to be a West Tiger one day. And I just I just thought it was a really below par performance, which uh, yeah we would have liked to have done a lot better. But yeah, no great great news, and a- any any sort of uh, financial uh, commitment we get from anyone that's going to help our our team in the future is is always welcomed. Uh, And Mr. Richardson, he did open up the office with Skander and Benji there up on the screen uh, last Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday last week. No, it might be Thursday because we hadn't gone to air. No, we we, we did. Thursday or Friday, I think. Well, we did Tuesday night last week. It was one, I don't know, during the week last week, they opened the new offices uh, in the center of 
Campbelltown. So, yeah, look, they are really trying to put their footprint out there. So there was talk of Campbelltown, which Sydney City doesn't know that Campbelltown will get more games next year. But, I mean, they're throwing their weight behind it. So I imagine, yeah, it's just like you said, Rob, it's, as, how much does it suck? As Rob says, we really want to build this Campbelltown thing. And there's a lot of, look, we've had a lot of discussion between the three of us online with people saying that Campbelltown, that people don't turn up. Well, they turned up. Although, to be fair, I, uh, what ratio do you reckon Dragons fans were yesterday? As I was thinking 35, 40% might have been Dragons fans. It was quite a lot. Yeah, that's probably what I would say too, about 35 to 40. But yeah, the Dragons fans do show up. It's obviously not a very mm. huge trip for them from Wollongong or even from Cogra. So yeah, they usually and they usually get around and support their team even when the team mm. isn't going too well. But in saying that, I think the the first month's worth of performances, barring round two um, from our team, really got fans to, I guess, sit back and think that we are on the right track and we are going places. So Let's go to the game and um, see see how we go. And um, I like we obviously hyped up the game a lot last week and told fans to get out there if they could. So, um, but yeah, it was it was a little bit disappointing. But this plan from Richardson um, that he's got down in um, Campbelltown at the moment makes me think he's planning something. Not entirely sure what he's planning, um, but seems like he's got something uh, in, in the back of his mind in the works down there potentially. So, Kim, uh, our $50 West Ashfield voucher winner, she said she went to West Ashfield on Friday for lunch. She had a, uh, I did see that on, shared it on the socials, had a nice pizza and a seafood meal there. So, good on you, Kim. We'll see who won that uh, $50 voucher for this week later in the show. Firstly, shout out to our sponsor again this year, Mobile Corp. If you, uh, would like to have your local business have a partner who will take away the hassle of dealing with IT issues. Make sure you have cybersecurity in place. Handle all your mobile device needs. Mobile Corp can help. Mobile Corp is a family-run business, long-time supporter of the West Tigers. Reach out to our mate Stephen and the team at Mobile Corp. Check out Mobile Corp. Dot com dot au. That's mobile, C-O-R-P dot com dot A-U. Just to Stephen. And righto, let's get stuck into this game itself. We're going to go try by try. And, of course, we didn't have to wait long. It was literally, I think, a minute and 40 freaking seconds. And the Dragons did this. He uses a decoy here to get Sloan involved on the outside. Catch and pass. And the opening try inside two minutes from Zach Lomax. What about this start from the Dragons? Rob, we're talking about the crowd and the atmosphere and that sort of thing. One way to shut the hell up the crowd is to score literally what first, I think it was second set if you count, but basically the first time they had the ball because it was off the back of a penalty. Correct. Yeah, it was. It was awful. It was what we feared. Um, look, Rob Stradamus didn't get much right over the weekend, but like when we reviewed or you know previewed, I should say this game, uh, I did say St George run really good block shapes, uh, and they they certainly did. That was too easy. Our, our spacing was awful, uh, but again, we had a totally new left edge. Uh, we had you know Safarth and Sullivan there. Uh, look, I, you just got to say it. I'm not. I'm not going to you know, abuse people or anything like that. But it just seems like whatever side Sullivan plays, there's points leaked. Um, I don't know if they don't trust each other or whatever the case may be, but St. George got around us too easily and they scored within two minutes. Uh, luckily, about 13 minutes later, the boys bounce back. Tigers are in the red zone. Here goes Buller. Almost for Jareem Jordan Buller. Little name after the legendary basketball figure, and he was close to playing basketball as well. Oh, brilliant! The deception of Abby Corisau and Stefano Utoy Kamanu makes the most of it. Yeah, off the back of a nice little run by Dream Buller. As 
more for the first time, certainly maybe the last time I say this before May when State of Origin starts, he has to be in the Blues uh, one to seventeen somewhere. Uh, how good was that from Steph? And yeah, at this stage, we had a bit of hope. We took took the lead in this game. Yeah, that was amazing. That was um, like full credit to Jareen Buller for that run that got us that close to the line and made this so much easier. But that was an absolute carbon copy of the safe half try uh, from Leichhardt a few weeks back where he looked like he, mm. he, he made it look like he was going to pass the ball back to someone uh, while Stefano was just the decoy and then just drops it onto his chest, easy peasy, and he goes over almost untouched. It was a great try. Well done from Stefano to read that well. Uh, catch the ball um, when he like was running full tilt at them as well. It was a yeah really good try. The conversion attempt afterward, not so much. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a bit tough to miss those ones from that close to the post. And I don't know, Touchy's got a bit confused there. One at the flag up, one at the flag down, and a uh, little bit of chaos. But uh, yeah, it was a, it was a very good try. Yeah, it was obviously the next play uh, we'll get to because on the back of that Rob Stradama sitting next to me literally said when Appy missed that by the way I, I haven't re-watched the game did it definitely miss it definitely missed Josh yeah, um, okay yeah I actually bounced off the post and kind of went across the face and landed bounced out the front yeah the the, the Sunday night show with Maddie Johns showed um the kick from both angles there and, mm. and you can clearly on the front angle like from Corus outside you could see the ball came in front of the post like it wasn't blocked out yeah. and then they showed that they, they showed the shot uh from the back there as well but just just want to add on that try guys don't forget the deception from Coruscant which was which was beautiful and as Aaron said that run from Buller you can see um uh, the guy's name just escaped me that the lock for St George uh, of course he'd skittled everyone Buller the lock for St George had yeah Eisenhuth had to come across and when Eisen, Eisenhuth came across to make sure Abby couldn't score Abby recognized that and just uh Steph ran through that hole but I mean, look, let's be fair, guys. If Steph had thought about it, he could have just run under the post because mm. there was no one touching him. And and that would have been an extra two points. And remember, we do kick a penalty goal not long after it. I'm sure if the score was 6-4, we might have gone for a try instead of going for, for the two points to make it 8-4. So that big that misconversion really was huge uh, in the scheme of things at the time. You literally said that to me. As Appy missed it, you said, look, if we get a penalty down the other end now, we'll probably go for goal. Whereas we if did. we're up 6-4, six, up six, and that's exactly what happened. Sullivan yeah. caught high, it appeared, and that's why the penalty is blown as Hart checks on Sullivan. Trying to make the lead two here. Makes the necessary adjustment. Yeah, as a harder kick for Appy. I mean, Rob just said, I, I did think this did go through my head watching the highlights back that Steph basically, there was no one back there and he could have moved it a little bit closer. But, I mean, I mean, it's a 99% kick spot for, for most kickers. So, really, yeah. It, it's, I've said this term before, sliding doors moment if that conversion goes over and then that penalty we tap and go or yeah maybe well, i don't know maybe maybe not it could have been a whole different game you just said it it's it's a 99 percent kick but what are we trying to do we're trying to improve the one percenters they're the sure. little things that can make the difference in the game so uh look I, look to be fair to steph i think he kind of was bobbling the ball as he caught the ball because he was yeah. running with a full head of steam so maybe he thought you know what i better just control this and put it down but yeah if he had his time again he'd, he'd run around and improve the position and he really he would have put it under the post oh shouts to d trizzy on youtube he just became a member so if you don't want to become a patreon member uh you can if you're watching on the youtubes you can uh become a member you get this cool little icon that comes up and will uh shoot me a dm and i'll give you a link d trizzy for the members discord so legend for signing up and we'll get to the super chats uh later we did have a super chat um last, last episode and i'll include yeah. that I, I totally forgot to go back to it so apologies i will bring that one up too when we do get to that one uh 
on to. So where are we up to? Tigers penalty goal, and then uh, the ball goes up in the air. I think was that the next one? Jack no. Burr? No, it was. Look, I'll play the audio, and I'll be reminded of it. Very late offload there. Eisenhuth, another one. Great pick up from Hunt. Oh, brilliant by Ben Hunt. Take your pick out there on the right-hand side. It's Jack Bird who said thanks very much. Yeah, as I said a word that rhymed with Hunt, I think at that point, not ideal in that situation. No, we um, we were definitely on the back foot from that point. Um, that was a really well-placed uh, try by the Dragons. I thought they uh, made that really well. And you could see what side of the field they were targeting and you could probably hazard a guess why they were targeting that side of the field. Um, and yeah, pretty much all game, it, it worked a treat for them. Rob, it's amazing when the ball goes on the ground, if the attacking team picks it up, it seems like it always leads to something. Yeah, look, guys, we could do a podcast on that try. That was some of the worst defence I've ever seen. Uh, DeBellin offloads the ball and he's being held by Bolle, Steph and Alex Twole. And he offloads the ball. And then obviously, again, when Eisenhuth gets the ball and he's running at Safarth, there is no need for Bud Sullivan to come across. Uh, so there's just multiple things that go wrong. And honestly, I think Ben Hunt could have scored himself. Like he didn't even have to pass it. He was literally a couple of metres out from the line when mm. when they scored. But uh, look, we'll get on to like probably discussing the whole game and, and players a bit later, guys. But everyone's saying, you know, we did this wrong, that wrong, etc. everything wrong. Guys, you can literally sum it down to one thing. They literally beat us at every every ruck, every tackle, except maybe 15 to 20 tackles in the whole game. All our problems were from their quick play the balls. We couldn't wrestle them. And then we had the ball. They were wrestling us. And they got all their penalties except for Appy's out on the full, uh, which I think led to that try, by the way. Uh, Appy just kicked the ball out on the full, and, and that's where they got the field position from. But every penalty they got was because we weren't tackling properly. We And because we weren't tackling properly, our tacklers were scattered, our markers were scattered, they take off. They literally toyed with us. And I just don't think, as a unit, we weren't mentally ready to play. But it literally just came down to every ruck. And we lost 90% of the rucks yesterday. And I think that's what bothered me the most because I really thought we'd struggle to win without Galvin, Bateman and Samuel Afainu. But I didn't think we'd lose in the manner we lost to. We just got totally out-muscled. And that's just not acceptable for such a big occasion. If every ruck we lost. You can go rewatch the game. You'll you'll be surprised at how many play the balls they just get away so quickly, and and why they had to get the penalties they got. Uh, speaking of toying with us, uh, yeah, Mr. Lomax did just that. Extra hang time again. Fuller hands underneath it. Lomax got there again, and Zach Lomax oh does the unselfish thing. He is so good under the high ball, Zach Lomax. Creating a try for Flanagan. They're literally like an under twelves team handing off the ball when they probably could score themselves as giving it to their friends to score. But Sack Lomax look yeah, just beat Buller to the ball there. I mean there was uh an Appy Coruscant contest earlier in the game, and I don't understand why Appy Coruscant was penalised for that when he was merely going for the ball. But, um, yeah, whenever a high ball goes up, whether we're kicking it or they're kicking well, If we're kicking it, I think, well, they'll, nothing's going to happen here. And then if they're kicking it, I th- always feel, as, as safe as Dream Buller is, if it's contested, I think, oh, shit. Yeah, this new kick disruptor rule that they're trying to crack down on this year is the new... Um, obstruction. It's the new rule that is going to be so misinterpreted, so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, inconsistent. It's just going to be one of those ones where it, whatever hap- whatever call is made, it doesn't seem like they're going to get it right. Because you might remember the one we had on Easter Monday uh, mm. where they had the disruptor jump through um, right on their attacking line. Uh, I think it was Buller. Or was it maybe Tupo who was trying to catch it? But, uh, yeah, they just jumped right in front. We ended up knocking it on because of that. And they had no attempt at 
attempting to catch the ball. Um, and the fact that that wasn't called a disruptor and then that one from Appy was uh, absolute bull crap. But yeah, you're, you're right. Whenever they, a lot of teams are going to have height on us because we don't have the tallest backs in the world. I think that's one of the mm. reasons why we need Alex Lobb out there because he's probably one of the tallest players in the competition. Um, and like we saw in the trial, he, he will do really well under the high ball for the most part once he's got a bit of confidence. But in saying that, yeah, poor Jareem, he, he looked like he was on track for that one and he just got, got it stolen from him, basically. Rob, you said to me at the game, I think you think the only thing Appy did wrong was he didn't catch it. <laughs> oh, look, I think, I think that, okay, if you want to go back to the disruptor on Appy, let's be clear about one thing, guys. Appy's the captain. We hadn't used our challenge at that stage. If Appy thought that he wasn't disrupting in any manner whatsoever, he would have used his challenge. Appy's mm. not stupid. He does have a glance. He's, he's looking mostly at the fullback. The problem I've got with the disruptor is if I was running at 100 miles an hour to the fullback and wanting to time my jump for the ball, it, to, to run that fast, I kind of actually want to keep my eye on the fullback and seeing ha- what, how he's looking at the ball so I know when mm. to jump. So it's a little bit of a, a, a grey area for me, this disruptor mm. thing. Uh, but look, back on Lomax, guys, I mean, that, that Lomax try that you talk, or the Lomax catch that he does before he gives it to Flanagan, I mean, again, Bud Sullivan, he doesn't have to run an escort, but if he's just running back towards the ball, Zach Lomax doesn't get that clean jump. And and none of our backs came back to support Jareem whatsoever. He's, he's just there like a sitting duck. Sure, you know, maybe he needs to improve his leap or try and catch the ball in an AFL manner. Uh, but, guys, Zach Lomax caught attacking kicks from St. George yesterday five times. It wasn't just the ones that led to tries. I mean, he, he did it once where he threw it to Ravalara where, when it went to touch. He did it another time in the second half where he threw it to Ben Hunt who knocked it on. But there were mm. actually five attacking kicks uh, where he did that. So, look, Jareem's going to have to be better under the high ball. And, and look, I'll be honest, if... Like those those two kicks that Jareem doesn't catch, I mean, that's 12 points to St. George. But take those aside, Jareem Buller was fantastic. But the problem mm. is, you know, if you if you can't defuse bombs, it's an issue. And, you know, I don't want to be a hypocrite, but I complained about Dane Laurie when he wasn't even going for, for bombs in the first couple of rounds last year and, and letting him bounce. So it's definitely something Jareem has to address, but he certainly needs the support of his outside backs or forwards, whoever's in the area, to run back towards the ball. You're allowed to run back towards the ball. You just can't run in a different direction and run someone off the ball. So, we again, we're talking about one percenters. These are the things we've been doing right for most of the year, and we didn't get it right yesterday. Uh, so, halftime, 16-6. We come out, and the first scoring play of the second half was this. Again. Oh, big hit! It went a little high, went a little wrong from Clemmer. They check out the replays There's of this no one. contact with the head, for the shoulder hits him in the chest. And then the arm Todd, comes we've got around. Move you, mate. It's, it's just... Report. Yeah, I have to wonder, that's from the highlights package, I didn't cut Joey off there. Literally, the highlights package cut Joey off when he's literally about to say, I, so I didn't watch the replay. By the sounds of it, Joey on the replay was thinking what I was thinking and I thought that tackle was actually fine. Turns out Clemmer only got a fine for it, but, um, for that one and the other one. So the other one, a bit surprising. The other one, okay, fair enough. The game is over anyway. As, yeah, watching it live, I thought it was fine. I haven't had a super close look at it, but in the even watching the replay, the highlights on YouTube, Man, it's a rough, rough call. I know we call absolutely anything close to a, to the head a penalty now, but I don't know. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, I didn't think this one was as bad as the one later on in the game. Um, I thought that one would maybe get a fine, but Clemmer, it, he was a bit sloppy for the entire game, to be fair. So it was a bit of a... I, I think... I'd say it was probably fair, maybe, um, bordering on it, but you, you never know. Um, and it all comes down to what the match officials have to say about it, and you can't really challenge those. So, anyway, yeah. Can you technically challenge them? If it's a penalty, you can, yes. 
I mean, you, I, you, I mean, you could challenge it, but you'd often, oftentimes, you'd be stupid to do it because they'll just go on like first point of contact, or if you have any any like any contact with the head whatsoever, or mm. neck, or chin, or whatever, they'd just say it's a penalty and you'd lose your challenge. So, yeah, I think you'd be stupid to try and challenge one of those. Uh, so not long after that, uh, it basically was. Yeah, basically the final, I was going to say knife in the coffin, final nail in the coffin came through this. It's Flanagan who gets it eventually, really late offload. Surely another offload, keeping it alive here, the Dragons. And now the space opens up, oh, cruising over Jaden Sewer and the Dragons in a dominant position now. Yeah, Rob, pretty embarrassing that one. Yeah, look again, guys. This came this came from a penalty on well inside St George's half when they were winning the ruck again. They get a penalty a few tackles later. Uh, you know, Suley can't be tackled. Gives the ball to Sewer. And look, I love what Stefano's brought to to this team this year. He's really brought his A game, but he just looked really tired. He's playing a lot of minutes. Just stuck his arm out, uh, and yeah, he, he went straight through uh, Steph, and then obviously Steph Jareem and and Sewer just, you know, we all, I, I did say last week in the preview, I was worried about their back rowers. Didn't know Luch was going to pull out, but Sewer had a great game. Um, and again, it's just that they were two good guys. There's nothing we could do about it. It was a pretty embarrassing try. Uh, and then 70 minutes, to, uh, 70 minutes in, 10 minutes to go. This happened. Joy. Oh, big hole opens up and the comeback might just be on. In the last 10 minutes. Well, finally, they went to that edge. Ben Hunt's in the centres. Just goes through without a hand laid on him. It's the halfback on the advantage line, going at the defensive speed. Not getting the ball out the back off a front rower. 10 metres from the advantage line. As the final 10 minutes, also might add with the final 10 minutes, I thought there could have possibly been a sin bin uh, for the Dragons for holding back. Who was it? it was Aiden Caesar was held back yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, someone explained to me why that wasn't a simp in. Well, he, he went up to the video ref and, and said, look for a possible sin bin. So it's whoever the idiot was in the video ref's box that said it wasn't a sin bin. So the, the ref did his job. He just wanted to make sure that it was a, a sin binable offence. I mean, what did Caesar miss the try out by against Sloan? He was like probably half a yard to a yard behind. Does does that little pull on the shoulder make the difference between a yard? Possibly does, possibly doesn't. But at the very least, it should have been a sin bin. And and we saw what we did last year against Canberra when we scored three tries while they were down a man. It could have made the difference. Yep. Um, but anyway, the Kepalwa try as the final 10 minutes, even against 13 men, they started throwing the ball around and looked like a completely different team yeah a lot of the time it's when something like that happens and you and you and you just start thinking to yourself why couldn't they start doing this earlier um could it have made a difference might it have made a difference but i'll tell you that try that was probably the one good thing that uh jaden sullivan did all game it was a really nice um pass to kepa and uh straight through a nice giant gaping hole in the end but and then a little bit after that, in the in our very next set with the ball, when we had a little bit of the run and a little bit of the momentum, that set, they were really laying down on us in tackles, really slowing down the ruck. And we couldn't buy a six again or a penalty in that set. And I felt like there were probably three plays or three tackles in that set where we probably deserved some sort of reward um, for like winning the ruck, but it just wasn't forthcoming. And that was probably really frustrating too, that... We had a really good opportunity there um, and didn't really get to capitalise on it. Uh, that was the last scoring play. Uh, anything else out of this game, Rob, that we've missed going try by try tonight? Any oh, look, moments just, just, that stand out? I just, I just thought it was a really silly thing. I, and I'm look, Kapoa had his best game, I think, for the club. Seriously, like even though he came off the bench, the the amount of meters he made, the tackle bus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when you're down by three scores, he scored the try. We need a quick conversion to get to twelve down. You don't boot the ball and try and kick it out of Campbelltown. 
you know, on, onto the tennis courts. Like, it was just so stupid. The first instinct should be get the ball back to the kicker and save some time. So, again, just shows me a little bit of, of lack of IQ with that. Uh, look, just on the game itself, guys, I found it really weird. I, I don't know what the game plan was. I'm, I'm totally confused by it. We won the toss. We elected to run with the wind, yet we didn't use the wind. Uh, and in all our good performances, granted, we, we haven't scored many points in all those games except Cronulla, all our forwards have been hitting the line and offloading. I don't think I saw a forward offload the ball till Alex Twole in the second half. So there was not one offload from a forward when they did a hit up in the first half at all. And I don't know if you guys remember when um, Aiden Caesar did that cross kick to Charlie Staines, which got an unlucky bounce Mm. Uh, and, and we could have potentially scored. We got into that position from a long-range run from Tupu, who gives it to um, Kapoa. We got into that range because our first offload of the day came from Justin Ollum, five or ten metres out from our own line. We literally had no second-phase play whatsoever. We just ran up like, you know, tackling bags with legs and just succumbed to tackles. We never tried to promote the footy. So I actually don't know what the game plan was. As Aaron said, there's certainly the last 10 minutes we came alive. And I remember saying to you, Josh, with seven minutes left, I said, where's this energy been? Because suddenly mm. everyone played like, you know, the, the footy was a hand grenade and, and times of the essence. And I'm thinking, why didn't you come out with this energy? And and again, I can't put my, my finger on it. That's something Benji's got to address. But perhaps it is all the games we've played with one or two men not being used in the game, like Jake Simpkin. Uh, or, you know, the fact that we played Parramatta with 15 men instead of using 17 men and we only used six of those eight interchanges that day. Maybe it's coming back to bite. I, I saw, like, Appy Corusau tried his ass off. Like, he put so much pressure on Ben Hunt. He did some wonderful things, but there were so many uncharacteristic things, like a poor pass to Aiden Caesar on the last tackle, uh, the goal kick that hit the post. I mean, I, I commented to you, Josh, he missed a couple of kicks in the warm-up that, you know, he missed one left, one right. And I thought, this isn't just, like him being physically tired. I think Appy's mentally fatigued. Like, mm. why didn't we use Jake Simpkin for a bit? We we need to be sort of looking after their their mental welfare as well as their physical welfare. And I, and I know Jake's not half the player Appy is and everything revolves around Appy, but you can't just keep squeezing every single thing out of every person every week. Like, I know we want to win, but... Steph looked tired to me, I, and and the, and what what I'm going to find really curious, say like I, I know I've, you've given me a heads up as to who the who the listeners have voted for and stuff like that, and everyone people have voted good, I voted bad, and everyone people thought are going to think that were bad, they're probably like my men of the match. So it's just funny how we all see different things differently, but generally you don't get that. Generally, there's a uniform opinion on on how the players went. I just I just think there's going to be a lot of uh, disagreeing arguments about about certain players today i think some uh, of these th losses will be the most interesting when it comes to who gets votes from the public and who gets the votes from yourself and myself rob because it's it's these sort of sorts of performances obviously you don't want to say too many of them but it is these sorts of performances where it's like everyone is likely to have a v vastly different opinion to the person next to them about who was great who was not good and who was kind yeah. of average and who was the best so I really do, like, when we do have those losses, I am going to look forward to seeing the votes. But like I said, I hope we don't have too many of these sorts of losses. Just, just one thing, guys, and it's only because it's just come up on the screen behind me. I've got the replay of the game going. I don't know if you guys remember when we got the scrum right in front of the post 10 metres out in Saints' red zone, and they were penalised, uh, I think it might have been for a high tackle on Ben Hunt. We repacked, we repacked, it. We repacked the scrum. Jaden Sullivan goes to uh, Fata Arpe. Fata Arpe drops down, it. Put, put, drops a ball cold. And Ravalawa is jamming in at a 1,000 miles an hour. And if Jaden Sullivan has any vision, he just passes the ball over the top to Staines and it's a try. Like, it's just so black and white. It's not even like, oh, you know, should he or shouldn't he? And I, I just feel like we had one half yesterday and I felt a lot was, you know, dependent on Aiden Caesar. And... I know there were two or three kicks from Aiden Caesar that were poor, but he tried his ass off. He organised the team really well. Uh, he didn't really have much help. And uh, I thought a lot of his defence was really good. I, I know sometimes he got pushed back like a, a number of our players, but Aiden Caesar has been a wonderful signing for us. But 
I, I just don't know how long we can carry Jaden Sullivan, not just in the 13, but in the 17. Right on to your player ratings. So first up, Coach Benji Marshall, rating out of 10, about nearly half of the people voted six or a seven. Um, if you encompass five in with that, 80% for five as well, you're looking at about 60%, five, six, seven. So mediocre from there. Rob's always already mentioned the use of interchanges. As any thoughts on Benji Marshall's coaching in this one? Um, yeah, the, like Rob said, the only concern I really have about Benji's coaching at the moment is the management of the bench um, and use of the bench. And if we're not going to, if we're going to have a utility on the on the bench but not use them, then why have them there in the first place? Why not have another forward? I mean. I get we were really down on troops in this game. Obviously, a lot of, uh, well, not a lot of, uh, a couple of suspensions and a fair chunk of injuries and HIAs and things like that were left us really short. But um, yeah, I think if we've got four players on the bench, we need to use those four players. We saw how it affected us um, in the Dolphins game after only using the two on the bench on Easter Monday. And then again, yesterday, using three we've got a six-day turnaround for our next game. How is that going to affect the boys mm. on backing up from the game? But once Benji starts to learn a bit more about that and starts to use the bench properly, I think he'll be on the right track. Um, otherwise, I thought the game plan, there were definite aspects of the game plan that were there uh, that were good. There were some that weren't. But uh, overall, I still feel like he is the right man for the job and he's going to lead us out of the doldrums sooner or later. Don't want to go back half a conversation but good um a comment from big screen tv says i don't think the players trust sullivan rob there was a moment in the game where caesar gave him a bit of a spray that that this comment reminded me of so yeah any thoughts on that yeah i just think it was aiden caesar just trying to get sullivan more so to organize where you know the men around him need to be and he and he was like that, that that's what I love about Caesar. Like he's just giving giving everything, and he and he hasn't been a part of the club. He's he's been there for what uh, you know a month and a half now in terms of competition games. So look, it's it's kind of weird. Like there there were some good moments from Sullivan. I saw a couple of really effective tackles that I don't normally see from him. But I don't see him trusting the men around him in defence, and I don't see. You know the men around him trusting him. It, I just think the spacing was all out. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I know Aaron said he saw some good things in you know and bad things about Benji's game plan. I I hundred percent believe Benji's a man going forward. I got no issue with it. I know I know we're going to have off days. I just saw an absolute rubbish game plan. I saw poor attack. Like we literally didn't didn't we fumbled the ball twice from a scrum in front of some Georges post like there's they just weren't mentally ready they weren't physically ready there was no offloads there was no market defense there was no line speed the use of the interchange were questioned and for me like if we win it's a 10 and if we lose it's almost a zero and i think i gave benji a one i just thought it was i just thought it was a i don't know what we tried to do yesterday i don't know what the plan was it was basically like let's keep it simple and let's hope that st george stuff up and it was only in the last 10 minutes when we had to do things that we promoted the football and, and we played a bit better. But I, I saw no offloads. I saw no intensity in, in defence. I saw nothing. I just, I don't know. We need to use that wrestling mat again this week and, and just get physical because there was no physicality yesterday. And I think it just gets magnified, boys, by the fact that it was such a big occasion. It took 19 years to fill this ground out again. And, and we came up with something that we hadn't seen in the last four or five weeks, which... Really, really hurts because we, we've been so good. We've set set such high standards, but you start to wonder, you know, are some of the boys getting mentally fatigued, uh, you know, and, and we're going to find out in the next fortnight or so because we've got to play the grand finalists back-to-back. So there's no easy games coming up. Uh, just before we get into the player ratings, just saw the stream did crack 100 there. If you are watching on the YouTube, please give us a like, help with the algorithm and help spread the show. Uh, righto, Stefano Utoikamanu way out in front with the rating. So 86% of people gave him a tick of approval. Next highest, Junior Tupo with 65%. And 
And then pretty close for third here. So Charlie Stain's got 58%. Uh, Junior Tupu and, sorry, Dream Buller. No, sorry, Jun- Dream Buller and Justin Ollum, uh, 50, 57% as well. Everyone else well under uh, the pass mark. No, yeah, well, Twally's close, 48 44 point. 8% there. So, boys, any as any of those numbers surprising for you? I think this is, this is actually the first time you guys actually see these numbers. So, yeah. Any surprises? You're on mute, As. Uh, yeah, for the most part, I think um, those are fairly accurate. I probably might have had Buller a little bit higher. I'm a little bit surprised to see some down on Buller, but um, you'll see later that I have him in my that I have him in my votes. Uh, so that's probably a bit there. Stefano, I can completely agree with. Um, the, the thing about Stefano was he played really big minutes in this one. The fact that we had one less forward, a front row forward on our bench, I think might have hurt us in this game. And as a result, Stefano played in the end. I think it might have been about 60 minutes. I was really surprised to hear the grand announcer say with like 30 or 28 minutes left in the game, that Stefano was back on. I, I didn't expect him to come back on for probably another 10 minutes after that. So, mm. but for the minutes he had to play, he did really well. Um, I was really impressed. And um, yeah, the other numbers stack up to about what I was thinking. Why did P- Fanua Pole not come back on? No idea. I don't know. Yeah, what did he, he get? 26 minutes or something? Yeah, he, he didn't come back on. So, which I didn't think he did anything enough to be hooked, but yeah, a weird, a weird one. It um, he he played well in recent weeks, so uh, a weird one from Benji there. I don't know if, if there was an injury. I haven't seen any reports of an injury. Um, so yeah, not too sure. On players not played well today, look, we've already hammered in pretty hard and 91.5% for Jaden Sullivan. Solomon Mona Fatape also 66% said uh, they weren't impressed. Isaiah Pabali, 55.9%. I've sent out a tweet today for you, Isaiah Pabali's stats. Yeah, statistically, he was great in this game and... Rob, I think people people really want to see the Parramatta uh, Eels Papali, but look, is it is it him or is it us that we're not seeing the the Para Papa? I, I think probably the first half of last year it was him. I, I think since the first half of last year it's us. Uh, I, I I don't agree at all with Papali. You know scoring that badly in, in the big games. The one for me there, guys, having rewatched it this afternoon, Fata Ape definitely needs a stint in Cup. He's just, he, he lost every tackle yesterday. Even when he made a tackle, he wasn't in position for marker. Uh, he he just looks lost. I'm not questioning how hard he tried. I know he tried hard. He's just not up to it. I think those two tries sugar-coated it yesterday. I just want to mention, guys, on Steph, if our listeners are giving Steph uh, the, the most votes there, then Steph's going to be in our top two every week because I, I accept what Aaron said. He's played long minutes, and the, the Steph that we've got this year is brilliant. And I look, maybe this try sugarcoats what he did, but he did miss two tackles that led to tries, and that's probably out of his six games. It's not that he played bad, but that's the worst of his six games. So I, I don't I don't know what I was watching and, and what everyone else was watching. So I, I don't I don't agree with the Steph thing at all. Uh, as any down votes that shock you at all? Um, I'm a little bit surprised that people said Buller didn't play well. Um, because there's this thing like I mean there's this thing where you could say it, you have to tick every player across the two votes, but in reality you don't have to do that because a player can play an average game and not really deserve to acknowledgement for playing well or deserve, um, well, get acknowledgement for um, not playing well or something like that. So a little bit surprising there. Um, yeah, I the other numbers, it's really interesting because a lot of those players who 
didn't get a lot of votes for played well also got a fairly low number of votes for didn't play well. So that's the sort of thing that surprises me. Like, mm. for example, you'd think that someone like, uh, where's a name that I was thinking? Justin Matamua didn't have a lot of votes for play well. Uh, how many votes did he have for play well, Josh? He had nine for playing well, 15 for playing not well. And for about 60 responses, that that's probably what I would expect some players to uh, be right there in the middle. He's probably one of those players I'd say was right there in the middle. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. But um, overall, I, I do fairly agree with a lot of the votes here. Clemmer, I think, getting close to half. Maybe he could have gotten a little bit over half of the not played well votes because, I mean, he didn't play as many minutes as Stefano, but the minutes he did play, he, he got a little bit loose and a little bit reckless. And at times that let the team down. A couple of the penalties were given away from him. Uh, I'm, I remember one, I think it might have been first, no, second half, like fairly early-ish maybe in the second half. Um, he gave away a penalty that was just coming off the line too quickly or not getting square at marker and then going straight for the tackle. And that was just silly and unnecessary. And then, yeah, those two high shots that just didn't need to happen. I, I think the second one needed to happen because Lomax was away. Like, let's let's be fair there. He just got beaten with a reflex action. But again, Clem, Clemmer had like 120-odd metres and no missed tackles. Like, I think people just look at the penalties and just say, well, like, he did this wrong. Like, for me, my 3 two ones have all got guys that did absolute clangers, okay? Like, absolute clangers. Like, Bullers cost us 12 points from not catching bombs. And I won't mention the other two yet to ruin it. But they all had really, really bad moments. But they did a lot of good things. If, if you want to pick guys on your 3-2-1 that just didn't do much wrong, then you're going to go both wingers and you're going to go Asu Kapoa because they literally didn't make a mistake. They, they did a lot of good things, but being wingers and being a bench player, how how often were they involved in the plays? And I just I just can't give 3 2 ones to guys that, you know, don't score tries or don't do this, but certainly those three blokes had probably their best games of the season, all, all three of them, but I, I just couldn't put them in my votes because... Guys like Buller, Buller's run 200-odd metres. He's He looked like he was going to make a break every time he got the ball, and he wasn't getting any help. It was just all individual stuff. So, I don't know. Everyone sees the game differently, I suppose. But, um, yeah, I, I thought that was one of Clemmer's better games again. But, you know, you go back to the penalties, and, you know, maybe that second one where he, he coat hangers Lomax, I mean, that's because, you know, uh, Aiden Caesar put in a really poor kick when we had all the momentum, and it gave him a seven-tackle set, and... Lomax bolts up to the twenty meter line, so maybe maybe Aiden Caesar should be paying that other fine for the Lomax <laughs> tackle. So it's just it's just you know one of those things, guys. But there are a lot of guys that you know played well, like Appy, like Buller, like Caesar. I thought Caesar's the best player on the field, but you know people remember the three shit kicks he did, and they say, well, he wasn't perfect, therefore I can't give him man of the match. So everyone's different, guys. We we all, we all see the game differently. Well, if you're given three to someone on a well-beaten team, I suppose there's always going to be imperfections. So based on your voting, Steph got the three, uh, Tupo got the two, and Staines got the one. As who have you gone for your three, two, one? So I gave Buller my three. I thought his support play was really good. Yeah, he um, had some issues with uh, um, conceding some points, but to be fair, a lot of the players did because it was a fair... A fairly poor defensive effort overall, but I thought he was still really, really strong. I gave my two to Stefano for the reasons I mentioned before, and I found it, and I said to you guys, I was finding it really hard to work out who I was going to give my one to, because it was really hard to, for me to pick a player out of the rest who I thought actually played um, a really solid game. I ended up giving it to Caesar. I mean, I had I had some issues with both of our halves constantly kicking down the throat of Michaeli Ravalawa, because um, he was all he ran off the back fence every time he got it, and then their very next play would be a, a really hard run from Moses Suli. So in almost all sets the Dragons had, we were right on the back foot with those two making good meters um, overall. But I still thought Caesar, for the most part, his kicking game was really solid. He directed the troops around well, and that's having to do it all on his own because, as we know, his halves partner wasn't having the best of days. Roberto, where have you gone? 
Well, no need for me to say what Caesar did well because Aaron's pretty much summed it up. Look, I mean, it's different watching a game on TV to watching it live at the ground. Mm. I, I thought Caesar was terrific. He really tried to organise he to organise a team that looked flat, that looked disinterested. Well, but basically, my three two one guys have gone to the three blokes that I thought tried the hardest and were were definitely mentally ready to take the game on. So. I went with, with Aiden Caesar for three. I went for Jareem Buller. Look, again, he cost us 12 points by not catching those bombs. I wish he would have got some support from his outside backs, stopping Lomax to catch those bombs. Uh, but other than that, he was faultless. He tried his hardest, and he was the only back that, well, maybe, I, I guess Tupu was pretty threatening as well. But other than Tupu, he was the only one that looked like scoring a try or being threatening. And... Again, Justin Ollum, he, he dropped a couple of balls, you know, one just before half time that could have been really costly. But I've never seen a bloke run with so much vigour. Like, mm. he really wanted it. He's really being a leader for the club. Uh, but again, as Aaron said, I've picked three blokes that have had some absolute clangers, but they did a lot more good things than they did bad. Uh, and it was a very hard 3 2 1. And, I, and again, I want to repeat, Kapoa was outstanding. And you have to just look at his numbers and and how he defended and how hard he was to put down. So really big shout out to Kapoa because I've bashed him for, gosh, two or three years. He's, I've called him, he's not a first grader, but he played really well. And again, Charlie Staines, like, he's not a big bloke, but he runs tough. He has the ball in two hands, so he, he threatens to pass, which gives him a few more metres. And Junior Tupu was just in beast mode yesterday. He, he basically put Jack Bird in concussion protocol ran over the top of him, you know, near half time and was just an absolute handful. Uh, so, look, it was – but, you know, I think there's a massive issue when two of your wingers are your best players. So, it's, it's not it's not a good look. I don't like wingers being our best players. Uh, and I, but I suppose, you know, St. George had Lomax. So, mate, maybe you can have your winger being your best player. Uh so leaderboard for the three, two, one. Stefano moves to the lead. He's on at twenty one point five because he shared a point with Dream Buller uh, when they were tied a couple of weeks ago. Appy stuck on seventeen. Buller third on fourteen point five. Uh, Aiden Caesar and Lockie Galvin obviously also Lockie stuck on thirteen. Not being able able to play the last two weeks. Uh, we have Olam on eight. Charlie and Toops on two, and Papali'i got uh, a lone point last week, I believe. Uh, right, uh, stats man, let's get into the stats. Have you got anything for us this week? I sure do. I'm just finding it uh, in the chat where I mentioned or where it was mentioned before, but while I'm finding it, um, it was a really, really, obviously a really difficult day a uh, really difficult game for the Tigers, but uh, there were other ex-Tigers out in the competition who performed mm-hmm. quite well. We had six ex-Tigers players score tries across the re- weekend and it started with uh, our good friend Jacko on Thursday night up in Newcastle. That was the first try of the game, I think, if I remember correctly, and it was a really, really bloody good try. Sean Blore? Sean sure, yeah, I was get I was getting there. Sean Bloor, yeah. your good friend yeah. that would have made you incredibly happy. Um, oh yeah, that was a really good try. And Addo Carr in that game as well scored three, I believe. Yeah, um, on his ret- on his second return from a concussion. Mm. So that was a very very heavy ex Tigers performance. Uh, Tommy Talau scored as well for Manly in what was an absolutely thrilling game of footy over in New Zealand. Uh, and a very, very clutch ex-Tiger who uh, scored probably two of the most hyped Tigers tries in Madge's coaching career. Uh, mm. Michael Cheekham got across the line again as well for the Rabbits. And uh, the Tiger we probably wish we still had from recent times, Joffa scored uh, on Saturday for Para as well. So while it wasn't a great day for the Tigers on Sunday. Um, other Tigers across the weekend had a great time. <laughs> At least the exes are having fun. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it was, Sean Blow, I was at the pub Friday night with some friends and my mate that I was with is a Bulldogs fan and Sean Blow scored and I like, I fist pumped and like, went like cheered yes and he looked at me knowing I'm a 
Tigers fan. I'm like, oh no, no, I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not happy for the team. I'm happy, I'm happy it's him scoring. I don't care about the storm. I'm just fist pumping because it's him specifically that scored. But um yeah, I shot shot him a text after it. Um yeah. On you, on you, Blory. It, um, I'll tell you what. And, I'll tell you what, Josh. Um, the family and I, my dad, my brother, and I, we were all very happy that Sean scored that try because we yeah. had the storm for the for a last man standing comp um, round one. Well, restarted round one down at the Ermington Pub, and uh, we all needed the storm to win that one, or otherwise we would have been out first round, all three of us. So, thanks, Sean. <laughs> he kept us alive. Gift that keeps on giving. Righto, into the stats from the game. Possession 51 to 49 in favor of the Dragons. It's pretty amazing as I was bringing all these up. It's actually very, very even across a lot of the stats. Uh, completion rates, 30 or 38 for the Dragons, 31 to 39 for, for us. So only one set difference and the same amount of sets. So eight uh, uncompleted sets in there uh run meters is less than 100 difference we've got got them slightly post contact meters we've got about 40 on top of the dragons line breaks three each tackles uh tackle breaks us got eight we got 31 they 23 so eight more than them uh what else is there as well there is uh Errors, six for us, eight for them. So we actually less errors by us. Effective tackles, 87% for us, 86 for them. Uh, missed tackles, they had 31. We only had 23. Uh, but ineffective tackles, we had 26. They had 18. I guess ineffective tackles is obviously including when they get the ball away for an offload. Am I right in saying that as? Um, is that an ineffective tackle yeah, when you, I don't think so. Um, I don't think it's in a, I think an ineffective tackle is one. Oh, how do I explain this? I think it might be one where you, you get a hold of them, but they sort of break away sort of thing because you technically haven't missed. You've attempted a tackle and it's gone horribly wrong. I might be wrong on that, but I, I'm not sure. I don't think off. Uh, tackles where they get an offload away count for that. I would assume that was a missed tackle. I know some of the comments clarify for us. Errors they made 13, we played nine penalties conceded. Uh, they uh, here's this one's pretty. We got nine against us, five, um, uh, five for them. Ruck infringements they had two nil, so we did get a couple of couple of six against. I think one of them was on like, the first tackle. Both but, of them um, were on first tackle. Were they? Yeah. So yep. who gives a shit? Uh, Rob, pretty amazing watching it live. I, w- I assumed that the statistics would have been all in the Dragons' favour, but it wasn't really. It, it kind of frustrates me more that the Dragons really weren't that good. We just, we just didn't capitalise. I think statistics can be deceiving, Josh. I'm, I'm not a fan of that ineffective tackle crap rubbish because we were ineffective in every ruck just about. And and I you know challenge anyone to re-watch that game if you want to put yourself through it. I'm, I'm just getting the shits re-watching it again now, having it in the background and just seeing how St. George is playing the ball really quickly and where not. In terms of completion, Josh, the more – I mean, sometimes the more you complete, that just means you haven't tried enough with the ball as well mm. and i don't mind if our you know completions are seven or eight sets down on being perfect like when we played cronulla like when we played para but we were trying to play footy this wasn't footy there there was hardly any offloads literally two blocks blokes justin Ollum, alex twall the only guys trying offloads and everyone else was just dying with the ball not doing anything and it was only in that last you know seven or eight minutes where because we got that try from Kapoa that everyone just got razzle dazzle and let's let's play a bit of footy and you're thinking where the hell was that for the previous 70 minutes so I don't know what the game plan was I don't know why we were so flat uh there's there's a lot of things I question but again 
I expected a game like this. I just didn't want it to be in probably what was the most important game of the season in front of a sellout crowd at Campbelltown. So just really disappointing. But I know the boys will bounce back and we'll play a lot better and hopefully we'll get our left edge back this week, which will make a difference. But I, I'm really keen to, to you know see when we do the Wednesday show. I'm really hoping there are some new faces. I, I don't want to see Sullivan there. I definitely don't want to see Fatah Ape there. Um, you know, I'm not saying Naden's is the ants pants, but he's a more experienced footballer. He's got some defensive deficiencies, no doubt, but Fata Ape is just not up to it right now. He, he, he'll he be a better player in a year or so, but he needs some time in cup. Uh, some individual stats. So meters gained during Buller surpassed the 200 meter mark. He had 212, Charlie Staines 175. And Junior Tupo, 162. So the back three, all the meter eaters. Post-contact meters. This one uh, caught me by surprise as 71 for the Forbes Ferrari. Yeah, I actually expected Papali to top that one. Um, he had a re- he had a lot of solid Luciano Lelua style post-contact carries for us from when Luch was at the club. Um, but yeah, I... Watching the game at the venue live, I would not have picked Charlie to be the the top post contact meter maker. Rob, you have mentioned Charlie a couple of times, but I think we are underrating him a little bit. Look, it's a really tough one, guys. I, I love what Charlie's doing, but at the same time, I also know we need an ear an aerial threat. And given what Lomax did to us yesterday, I can understand the arguments about Alex Lobb because I certainly wanted him in first grade, you know, for the first game that we played against Canberra. The knock on Lobb is that he's not one of those guys that can do those tough yards out of our own end. And that's what Charlie's doing right now. So again, Alex hopefully works on his game. He does have a tendency to, to, you know, jam in a little bit. I I don't know what he did on Saturday. I actually didn't, didn't watch the game. Uh, And just on a side note, Look, you know, we, we had a five past four game yesterday with with no game, you know, b- before first grade. And as a West Tigers supporter, I want to see my reserve grade team play before the first grade and know what they're doing and and be able to say, well, this guy played well, this guy didn't do well, instead of having to watch it at another venue on another day. So I think moving forward, guys, we need to get the New South Wales Cup game as a, a you know, a prequel to the main game. Uh, line breaks, Kepa Ola. Oh, by the way, as I looked up, uh, Papa only had 44. David Clemmer had 60 in post-contact meters. Uh, line breaks, Kepa Ola was the only one with more than one. He had two hit-ups. David Clemmer led the squad with 12. Uh, tackle breaks, we had three guys with with four. Steph, Toops, and Charlie all had four each. So Charlie, again, popping up. For his running game, uh, offloads, uh, four guys had two. So no one had more than two offloads. Twally, Pap, uh, Olam, and Tupo. Rob, you've already mentioned it, the lack of offloads. Yeah, no second phase. It's nothing like the Cronulla Parramatta games, like nothing at all. Like we literally saw David Clemmer lose the ball on the first tackle against Cronulla, trying to prom- promote the footy. We just had no intention of promoting the footy. It was like... It was like we're under instructions not to throw the ball around and, and be shackled, and it's just not. It's not first grade. It was. It wasn't a. It just was an awful, awful game plan. Awful. Everything about it was awful. I just. I, I You know, I'm probably being a little bit too harsh, but it just. I'm. I'm quite gutted that we lost. You know, to the team that came 16th, and and the team that towed us up in the trial too. Like there mm. was just no reason to come out flat. We should have been embarrassed from. You know the twenty-four nil they they got after you know twenty-five minutes or whatever it was in the trial. So, in my G, yeah, yeah. Again, I just uh, I just thought we'd be better than that, and it was just it just felt like you know we've been pumping getting to Campbelltown for how long now, boys? A month? I think we've been promoting every Years? week. Yeah, <laughs> we've been promoting yeah. every every week. Get out to Campbelltown, you know. Don't watch it at home. Get there. Been doing it on Twitter. Been doing it on the show, and you just feel like well. What was the point of that? It really, it really was just an absolute letdown. And I actually think St George put the cue in the rack near the end. Like I just think mm. they just did what they had to do, and yeah, just very poor guys. Hopefully, we'll be different. We'll bounce back from it. But uh, did not expect to see this sort of game, given what they the team has shown us all year. Really, like what the boys have done this year has been sensational. And and yesterday was just an absolute 
joke. Uh, tackling wise, Azaria Papali well out in front, forty eight with only two missed, so absolute workhorse. Twali, he made thirty six with only one missed in his minutes off the bench. Uh, Appy made thirty nine uh, with just two missed, so forty eight. Like that's as people were having to go at Papali for not doing much in an attack. He made forty eight tackles, so he may have been a bit tired. Yeah, it's quite possible. Um, we did have to do a lot of defending, uh, a lot of it through our own errors. Obviously, if you make an error, then you're giving the ball away. You're giving it straight back to them. I think the one that stood out to me the most was that one that Rob mentioned before off the scrum play when we repacked it and then went out to Atape, who who dropped it, and they just got the ball back from there, kind of made that a bit of a waste of time. And, yeah, you, you just put yourself straight on the back foot, and obviously the players that end up doing the most tackling are going to be the ones who are the most fatigued, so... Uh, let's get into Benji Marshall at Apicorosau's press conference. Here's Benji talking about getting the crowd into the oh, game. It's, mate, it's, it's amazing to see all our fans turn up. Um, there's no better feeling than seeing them out there. But like I said to the boys, you have to bring them into the game um, and bring them into the game by playing with energy, being aggressive, making them feel like the team's trying. And I just thought today um, it looked like it was St. George's home game, the way they were playing. They had more energy, more intent than us. As Rob's already talked about it, but um, yeah, the the silence of the crowd and how much we're pumped up, Campbelltown. Benji's not wrong there. Yeah, we were really taken out of the game fairly quickly um, when obviously we concede a penalty and a try within the first two minutes. Um, when the Dragons get their first touch of the ball, that's going to make the crowd a little nervous and a little worried. Um, yeah, the Dragons did well there to take us out of the game straight away. We got a little bit more back into it when uh, after Appy scored our first try, but from there it was kind of a bit of a grind and we didn't really do too much with the ball until the, from then until the last 10 minutes or so, and by then it was too late and a lot of the crowd had, had already started to leave. I think I noticed a lot of the crowd leaving when they scored the try that got them mm. to... Uh, 22 to six at that point, there were some people around me that stood up and just decided not nah, stuff it. And I don't like seeing that. Obviously you want your fans to, you want the fans to continue being there and support the team to the bitter end. But a lot of them probably left because of the obviously parking situation that you just, that you talked about before out at Campbelltown and how much of a crap fight it can be to get out of there at times and can't blame them for that. But uh, yeah, it was really disappointing that the crowd, lost the ability to be in the game from the start. But as the opposition team, that's what you've got to do. Um, and in the end, we home crowd advantage, and often you can, it gets you a couple of penalties, but we couldn't really buy penalties or six against um, yesterday, and that was disappointing too. Yeah, maybe we need the referee to park his car and Minnow. That we uh, <laughs> get, a few more, get a few more penalties. Uh, here's the Benji, the Benji Marshall, the He's talking about uh, how soft we were. Uh, yeah, I thought that was probably our worst performance this season. Um, yeah, again, I've talked about standards probably at a press conference, and today was probably the furthest we were away from the things we've talked about doing and practicing. So, um, yeah, it's a good lesson. We're, we're a team who's still trying to figure out how we win and, and find our way through it. And um, today I thought we bumbled around a lot. And, um, yeah, I thought we were looking for a soft way to win at the start. Uh, instead of earning the right. Rob, what do you make of that from Benji? Both the both the clips that you've played, Josh, I agree with everything you said except the word probably. It wasn't probably our worst performance. It definitely was our worst performance of the year. I, I've been proud of what the West Tigers have served up and I, I've had no illusions. I've never said we're going to make the finals or, or, or have, you know buy grand final tickets or anything like that. I just... Look, we conceded the first try against Cronulla at Leichhardt, you know, when, when we won our first game, but there was a different intensity to how we came out and just, there was just nothing, guys. It was absolutely, I, I, I don't know what it is. And I'm sure Benji and the coaching staff will probably try and work out and say, what did we do wrong or right during the week that brought this about? Because I'm sure they didn't expect it. And obviously, it, just forgetting footy as a club and with what we're trying to do with Campbelltown, I mean, you're not going to get a full crowd when you play Brisbane in a couple of weeks there. So, you know, it, it, 
it'll make people think twice about wanting to come back. So Benji, look, it's part of Benji's learning curve too. He's just got to figure out what it was. But I'm glad that Benji's man enough to admit all these things because he's 100% right. We, we, it looked like it was a St. George home game. They wanted it more than us. How the hell did they want it more than us? Like we've come last two years in a row. We should be inspired by the fact that everyone's on board. Memberships are going up. The, the crowd's packed. Like it took us half an hour to get into the ground. It's just, it was just really disappointing, boys. Uh, underwhelming is an understatement. So I'm glad Benji's admitted it. I hope they can get it right. Um, you know, just a pity that we're playing two really hot teams in the next couple of weeks because Penrith are coming off a bye and getting embarrassed in uh, Daily Cherry Evans milestone game at Brookvale a couple of weeks ago. So Penrith certainly aren't going to take us lightly and, and they know how well we've performed against both Cronulla and Parramatta, two high-ranking teams. So, uh, and, you know, we'll have the Galvanator back, we'll have Bateman back, we'll have Sam Fainu back. Uh, so I'm, I'm expecting more this week, but you know, whether it's going to lead to a win or not. Uh, just going to be interesting what Benji thinks about managing minutes with players and stuff like that. Because obviously, boys, you, you all know when Coruscant was winning premierships at Penrith, he was playing 50 to 60 minutes a game. And now we're literally forcing him to the point of getting cramps. And he actually told Peter Moose yesterday, I don't want to come off. Like he's shooing him away. And I, I just think we've we've got to take it out of Appy's hands. And he's just got to, I know he wants to win and he, he wants to be the, heroic captain but for his own sake for his own longevity we've just got to like take him off whether he likes it or not i want him there for next year i don't want him burnt out this year uh last one let's do benji talking about bud sullivan yeah um i thought bud was uh he was trying hard out there today probably sometimes too hard um yeah but we'll look at that during the week um the performance side of things and you know lucky obviously he's been suspended we'll be straight back in the team as so, yeah, Lockie, he did humbly say that he wasn't sure if he'll get thrown straight back in the number six jersey. But thankfully, Benji, come four o'clock Tuesday afternoon, we'll see Lockie named in that number. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was hoping to see Lockie straight back in. The two weeks rest has probably done him some good considering he's young um, and obviously not quite fully build up to his frame yet and obviously still a lot of development to go as well but yeah the thing that i really find frustrating about those some of those press conferences some of the questions that get asked like they asked how, how or what benji's thoughts were on sullivan and you know a coach isn't going to go in there and absolutely savage one of his players to the media might do it behind closed doors certainly but not to not to the entire public so a bit of a strange question but yeah, glad to hear mm. that. Um, glad to hear that uh, Galvin's going to be straight back in. I thought I got a good answer in. though for Benji to come out and say, "Yeah, Galvin, we'll replace him next week." I thought it actually got a pretty good answer. Uh, Rob, any changes on top of that you expect come four o'clock tomorrow? I won't say expect, Josh. Uh, I think if we're going to have a, like a, a utility as such. I know Sullivan can cover a few positions. Personally, I would rather Jakey Simkin there. And should something happen to one of our halves, Appy can switch to the halves, which I think is probably less tiring too, to a degree. Mm. So I'd like to see Bud left out of the 17. Uh, I, I really want, I you know, no offence to the bloke. I know he's trying his ass off, but I, I really want Fata Ape out of the team. You, you just, just if you know, if you've got time to watch a video, just watch Fata Ape. Don't watch anyone else and watch Fata Ape. He's not ready, guys. Uh, so, really looking forward to hopefully having Naden back in the team. And, you know, it's basically Naden is going to be put on notice. If you don't show good form, then we'll get someone else in there because obviously Tower will be coming back soon. But again, it looks like we've got a problem with that second centre position. Uh, obviously, I want to see the two boys that got concussion. Uh, that were out for protocols come back in. So that'd be nice. Uh, look, guys, if we're going to reward people on effort, Kapoa's got to be there. Uh, I, I don't want to see Saifarth on an edge. I think that's a, a coaching error. Saifarth should have stayed on the bench and come on as a middle. And we should have just... I know it's hard to trust Kapoa after what he's done over the last two years, but we should have trusted Kapoa. If we're talking next man up, well, he was the next man up. He should have been the left edge. So look, it's... 
there's there's a few changes I'd like to see, but I, I don't think the wingers will change. Fullback won't change. Aiden Caesar will be there with the Galvanade. I just think it's Futter Arpe from the starting team. Uh, and, yeah, Bud Sullivan will drop out for Galvin. But it's really, for my thing, it's who's going to take that number 14 spot. Because I'm sure Twole will go back to the bench. or well, he's still on the bench, but Twole, Alex Safarth will go back to the bench. And if Samuela Fainu is right, he'll get that fourth position on the bench. It's whether we've got Jake Simpkin or uh, Bud Sullivan there as number 14, which will be interesting. But again, guys, it is tough for Benji because he can't just shatter Sullivan's confidence. Like, he's got to handle it with care, as you said, Josh. He can't bag him out in a press conference. And there were moments he did try. I think with Sullivan, though, he's just got... In his game, he's got a lot of bad, lazy habits in terms of where he puts himself and where he positions himself. But I do agree with Benji. In, in part, he did really try. But it's just not good enough for first grade boys. Uh, speaking of which, the comment of the week that you picked as kind of says a similar thing. So congratulations to Joe R. Joe, uh, if you can... Send us an email, podcast at westlife.com. I'll pass the, your details on to the marketing team at uh, Holman Barnes Group, and they'll leave a $50 voucher for you there. As do you want to read out Joe's comment, seeing as you were the judge this week? No worries. Uh, Bud Sullivan, not NRL standard. The boys look tired, flat, no direction, and just outplayed again. Ref, ref was ordinary as per standard. We can't rely on a suspended 18-year-old to return to have any hope. Just not good enough for Saints to score in the first couple of minutes. I knew it was always going to be an uphill battle today. Hopefully lessons are learnt and we come back hard next week. Go Tigers. Uh, right. so some other great comments. Sorry to, yeah, to all... Thank you to all of you for, for leaving comments. Um, sorry, I can't get to all of them, but... As you'll learn soon, I probably won't have enough voice to get through all of them. Uh, Shane Collett, one of our loyal Patreon listeners, I see him in the comments tonight as well. He said, average of best contest for the ball. Crowd deserved more than that rubbish they dished up. The jury's still out for me with regards to Caesar's kicking game. Saints weren't that great, which makes the whole 80-minute nightmare worse. Penrith next week can't wait. Tom Smith said, the effort from the Sharks and Eels game has run out. We are making too many penalties. Our possession is killing us, and we need to control our emotion despite the try assist. Appy had a comparatively subpar game, giving away a few penalties. Sullivan has improved quite a bit, but is still not the right fit for our side. No clamour and no rain for Bathurst will make things tough, but with a galvanator, Bateman and Fainu returning, there is still a glimmer of hope. We need to keep our heads out of our shells. Uh, is that the right saying? Keep our heads out of our shells. Anyway, learn from this game, clean up the errors, then we might win next week. Uh, SKG said, any danger of biting down on the mouth guard and running the ball hard? We're in the slow motion. We can't even throw a spiral pass to someone's chest. How tempted are we for Galvin Fainu halves combo next week? The silver off the bench. We need an injection of energy. We weren't hungry enough, and the side needs a big shakeup. Uh, Brandon said, I wasn't at the game, but Campbelltown just feels like a ghost town on the TV. No matter how you get there, uh, no matter how many you get there at the ground, I'm concerned that. This is our home ground going forward. I just don't get why they don't get up for an important game and a bad effort to play for Keith Barnes. Memory, other than that, thoughts and efforts in defense were, were poor. We don't have the energy like we did in our wins. We need to turn it around fast or we will spiral out of contention again for the eight. I don't think, yeah, I mean, we're not really expecting top eight. But, boys, we'll touch on the home ground thing a little bit more. We have kind of hammered it quite a lot tonight but um playing there in two weeks time we'll turn up for the boys against the broncos as well i know if if it's not a good game against the panthers on saturday but with a few star players coming back um yeah it, it should be worth the trip out i mean assuming you don't live anywhere near camel town uh, the trip out to camel town for the game so let's um Support the it'll be a team. fairly it'll be a fairly different team that runs out there in two weeks' time, mm-hmm. pending no injuries or suspensions from this next game than the team that ran out yesterday. 
Guys, I, I went to a game in 2011, I think it was, when we played the Cowboys on a Sunday afternoon at Campbelltown. One of the best atmospheres I've been to, and it wasn't even packed. Uh, I remember distinctly when Robbie Farrell was told to go find another club. We we played at mm. Campbelltown in a small crowd. Smoked the Warriors. Yeah, smoked the Warriors, and mm. that was a mad atmosphere. I really – I'm going to be at every Campbelltown game. I'll, I'll be there – body and spirit and willing it on. But I just want to be brutally honest. Yesterday, it wasn't the same. I, I don't know what it was. There was not the atmosphere I expected from a team that's won a couple of games this year and a, and a packed house. And I'm not saying it's like this all the time, but I, I, I do want to say that there was something wrong with that atmosphere yesterday. I, I mm-hmm. can't put my finger on it. Just It just didn't feel right. I'm just hoping it's just a one-off. Uh, because I've I've been to other games, you know, where I sat on the other side of the ground and we lost to New Zealand a couple of years ago and we lost to the Gold Coast and they were pretty good atmospheres. But there was just something about last yesterday that just, I don't know, maybe it was the mood from the tragedy in Bondi the day before. I don't know what it was, but it just was a quite a down crowd. And uh, yeah, even when we scored the try, I didn't, I didn't kind of see a Tigers chant or I don't know, it just... It was very, very placid crowd. Ashton said of- on Facebook, sorry, as everyone had a sunstroke by how slow it took them to get let the crowd in. Maybe they, they it was very, very slow getting in. And we were, I think we actually rock, turned up early enough because when we got in, I went off to get a, uh, a Coke Zero and walked past the gate and the lineup around was literally like down the road. It was pretty crazy the crowd to get in just not not good enough in 2020 well, again maybe, maybe Sorry, if we had a game before it maybe if we had a game before it and yeah. the, the crowd got a chance to cheer for someone or something they might have gotten mm. a bit warmed up i mean you know anyway that, that's something the club's got to work out but you know if you're paying good money for a ticket i think we deserve a prequel to a game of any type of rugby league if it's not reserve grade let it be jersey flag sg ball mm. a woman's game whatever whatever but you just can't have a, a solo standout game for a sold out crowd. Bring back and hopefully that's something Richo acknowledges and, and, and fixes up moving forward. Um, um, sorry, we... I was just I was just gonna say the thing about our game in two weeks' time there is there are a lot less Broncos fans in Sydney than there are Dragons fans, obviously. So it will be a much higher percentage of Tigers fans, you'd yeah. assume, at that game. And I will also say, just to get everyone probably maybe a little bit more excited. That game is going to be a triple header. We're going to have Jersey flag, reserve grade, and first grade at Campbelltown all on the same day, like the good old days, I would imagine. <laughs> uh, Saturday, That's good to hear. Saturday, 5.30 uh, in, uh, I guess it's it's the end of the school holidays, but still Saturday night and kid-friendly time as well. So, uh, Lance Shepard said, dog it on the big occasions, nothing's changed. Chris said, can't really put into words how disappointing today is. We as fans pack the place out on the back of a bad loss to show our support for the team. We were rewarded with what can only be described as a subpar effort. I understand there are players out and issues, but even with that, I would have expected a better attitude in defence. Seeing it live, it looked very much a no-care game. and when we, were, we were punished. Uh, we had a great opportunity here and missed it completely. Maybe things approved, but if standards are the new mandate, mandate for Benji, there should be a lot of players sitting out next week due to poor performance, effort, and attitude. Uh, Tim White says, time for Ice to go back to reserve grade and Sullivan can go back to park football. Rather Brooks than this guy. Uh, the club carries on about no crowds out here and we sell out and the, they produce that shit. Don't expect to get crowds out here next game. Now, completely disagree with you. Just because I disagree with your comments doesn't mean I won't put them up. So happy for people. Look, no opinions wrong. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't get the hate for Ice at the moment. I think, yeah. Uh, well, I guess I scored, what, 16 or 17 tries for two years in para. I yeah. mean, who did you have last year? He was playing outside Luke Brooks. I would hazard a guess and say Luke Brooks hasn't put a second rower. He probably put in 10 years a second rower over for a try five times maximum. I mean, all I can remember Luke Brooks doing is giving Chris Lawrence concussion with those crash plays. So Mm -hmm. I I don't think playing outside Luke Brooks is going to help your game. In fact, I remember 
Papali'i giving Luke Brooks a line break assist, not the other way around. So um, Luke Garner just, here. <laughs> just just give him time. Just have the right bloke outside him. I mean, you, you can't be telling me that uh, Papali'i wouldn't have scored that try that Kapoa scored yesterday if he was on the left edge there. So just give give him a, a classy, you know, uh, ball distributor creator like a Mitch Moses and, and see what Papali'i does. But he, you know, he's he's got a bloke who's trying to organise the team in Caesar on that side. He's just he's just doing the job he's told to do. So as long as he tackles and tightens up that edge, that's really all I want from him now. If he gets a try or two, that'll that'll be a bonus. But he's not he's not getting quality ball. Like he's got to do it all himself. A lot like Buller had to do yesterday. Uh, Kai said, Stefano has to be in the origin team. I don't want to hear anything else. Ice is great in defense, but his attack isn't there. Maybe a move to lock suits him. Uh, for two people I'm critical of, AJ and Tupo had good performances today. Both are good players when you make their job simple for them. The bench just wasn't there today. Seifarth is an animal off the bench, but isn't the same while starting. And Samuela is a massive player for us off the bench. Uh, a few big ins next week, and I believe we can beat the Panthers. Uh, ben says, back to life, back to reality, bad contact in D, lack any execution and speed and attack. Too many times we had one step up and want to had no one step want to step up. Had Try again. Many times we had no one step up and want to run the ball. Bud is just not it. Should not be in the team for the remainder of his contract. We miss Bateman and Fainer big time. Our reliance on an 18-year-old is actually scary. It's funny with Bateman. I feel like a lot of people bag him out when he does play, and then everyone says we miss him when he doesn't. Uh, Chris W. still desperately lacking a 13 who can ball play, connect both sides of the field. Pole 8, Twal, and Safarth are not the answer. Anyone agree with that? Yeah, Josh, I thought the last 10 minutes, Matamua actually kind of straightened our attack and and you know there, there were a couple of it was like a little snapshot of what he could possibly be if he can have a bigger motor and and play a bit more I, I don't think he had many meters yesterday he didn't get much time uh, he still missed a couple of tackles but look I mean we can't do worse than than giving him a go and and maybe having Polly back off the bench for some impact uh you know we can always go back to a plan b and just hook him if he doesn't do the job but I'd definitely like to see him get a go, but otherwise, yeah, we have to find a 13 from another club or, or somewhere or, or get it from lower grades from someone that played at Lidcombe on Saturday that I didn't get to see yesterday pre-game. Uh, Elaine Richardson, disappointing game. Thank God Lockie Galvin is back next week and we don't have to see Sullivan in the team. Thomas L said, I don't know what to think. I think we're going forward still, but we need to win these type of games. That can easily, uh, they can be Easily one to be in contention for the finals. Uh, but until they fix up our team, we won't make the finals. All I can say is the next few games are crucial to see what we have as a team, if they are finals worthy or not. Uh, up the Tigers, be those filthy Panthers and that wanker of a coach. Clear he's a wanker, reference to the best game against the Panthers in 2021. Uh, Riff Raff said, I said it in the Discord, but it's worth letting the masses know, as confirmed by... Uh, this is that was last week's. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely last week's. Um, and Daniel Borto Lucy said flat performance at around twenty minutes ago in the second half. The crowd was doing the wave. There is no atmosphere at Campbelltown. Yeah, they were booing us. It's funny at the cricket. I get the wave, and then you boo the members. We we were the snobs up in the members that they were booing. It's rugby league. We don't need a fucking Mexican wave. We're trying. The Tigers were literally. <laughs> We were five meters out from scoring, and you're trying to do a Mexican wave, like, and it was the it game was, was still George going. Fans that started it. It was a George yeah. It's I've, rugby I've league. We don't, wave we don't the... need a Mexican wave at the rugby league. It's it's a I game that you need to keep your eye on. It's not cricket where it's it's you need a bit of entertainment when there's an Indian batsman blocking the shit out of the ball. Like it's <laughs> rugby league. And why That's why are the why second time I've seen the wave in the footy? Yeah, I've, I, it's so I've been a thousand. A few hundred rugby league games, and very rarely does the wave happen. It happens I've in boring games like AFL soccer. as well. Why are members inviting St George supporters to our to our games? There were a lot, weren't there? There were a lot of around, literally Mate, in front of us, behind us, us. That guy behind us was killing me. Like I was very polite. <laughs> I never turned to him once. 
but I was just like, get the F out of here, mate. You're killing me. I'm I'm meant to be sitting amongst Tiger supporters, and he's going, oh, this is too easy. We're going to kill him, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, shut the hell up, mate. Uh, tips, Roberto, you did pretty well this week. You got six and a half. Uh, I got five and a half, and As got five and a half. I don't know why you ticked. The, I don't know why you've tipped the uh, ticked the Cowboys, Josh. They lost. Did they? Yeah, they yeah, did. Okay. Okay. Right, twenty seven twenty. I still got six right, out of eight though. <laughs> I, couldn't, I, I couldn't couldn't bring myself to remember that Parramatta won. Uh, all right, minus one off those. <laughs> Um, Most of the tipping comps as well, uh, I will say the one we use for our um, our Patreon and member comp, that one, ESPN, does give points to you for whichever team you pick if there's a draw. So It's like a buy. It doesn't matter. <laughs> everyone everyone has it. So you, game, get a, if you get a point or don't get a point. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, Yusuf Isles Cup or at Lickham Oval on Saturday. By the sounds of it, I didn't see the game. Uh, I think the game is very similar to first grade. The Dragons scored early, kind of ran away with it, and then we scored late, but it was too late. So um, New South Wales Cup went down as well. They're down in 11th place uh, in Harold Matt. So uh, interesting enough, I've got the scores from the finals games up on the screen. The, obviously, the Magpies had the week off, not obviously, if you don't know. The Magpies had a week off because they finished top two. Uh, the Warriors beat the Eels and the Sharks beat the Roosters. Out of all that, as I think the Magpies, they play the Sharks. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. They did a release this afternoon when that is. I think it's in Penrith on Sunday afternoon out of Penrith. Not Penrith Stadium, but somewhere out of Penrith. So uh, we'll preview that on uh, Wednesday nights, anyway, and uh, our Lisa Fiola girls they knocked off the Central Coast Roosters, so they will play for a spot in the grand final up against the Steelers. As is that right? Correct. Yep, that's I correct. Did, I, um, because in the other game, the so sixth and fifth both won in this, so we were fifth, and the sixth place team knocked off the. Third place Third. team, yep. yeah. So yeah, we avoid the uh, hot running Bulldogs. So we might play the Bulldogs in the grand final if we can knock off the Steelers next week. So we beat, yeah, the Sunny Coast. Just got to beat the uh, the South Coast next week. Uh, super chat time. We got one tonight from Brandon. Brandon again. Uh, he said. He sent us eight bucks. Thank you very much, Brandon, supporting the show as always. We seem to always lose to teams outside the eight top eight quality. Got boys coming back from injury. Galvanator is back. Battle of the Cats. Let's get the win. Look, the Dragons, I don't think, are as shit as we think they are. I, I, I mean, Ben Hunt is a bloody good player. Lomax is playing out of his skin. Anyone back me up on that? I don't think the Dragons are... Uh, Rubbish. They have I'll, I'll one of the better in back fives in the comps. Yeah. yeah Josh, I'll, I'll back you up in the sense that some teams just don't match up well against others, and we saw how poorly we matched up in the trial, and I always thought this was going to be a difficult game given the three players we were missing, but I was real. I just did not expect to lose in the manner that we did. Uh, just to literally felt like we didn't show up, and, uh, you know, you hear a lot of the comments that you've read out there has been flat, lacking energy, clunky, all those sort of comments mentioned, and, and that that's what I didn't expect, especially given the fact that we had a bit of a decent turnaround after two games within five days of each other. Uh, the super chat that we forgot last, well, I say we, I forgot last episode, uh, D Trizzy, who became a member tonight, I can't bring your comment up now, but he became a member anyway, even though we I let him down and didn't bring his comment. So he said last episode always going to be a huge problem zero depth especially in key areas unfortunately i can't see us winning this one but i'll be back for the game look he was right he paid he us was, five bucks he was, and right. he was correct so thank you thank you d trizzy for supporting the show as well and thank you to us patreon members patreon.com forward slash west life if you want to support the show what are the guys and girls got for us this week was there much in there as i haven't actually had a 
I, there was there was a, a couple of messages after the game yesterday, but I think it was a, a small little chat they had between them. I'm pulling uh, it up now. Uh, Benny Ellis said Benji has a first grade quality assistant coach for defense, and it shows Benji doesn't have an experienced attacking assistant coach, and it also shows not a bad comment there from Benny Ellis. Shane Cole. Uh, shit clanky attack. Not sure what you guys think, but the jury's still out with me in regards to season. I read the comment out before, Shane. <laughs> it's ex- it, you literally copied and pasted it from your form, so I won't bother with that again, but thank you anyway. Uh, Michael said, we weren't marching downfield in the service. The season got was horrible so many times. He had to readjust, catch the ball, and rush his key. That's a, that's a good point. Uh, I don't think anyone or any of us have mentioned tonight is there was a few times Rob, that we noticed, Caesar basically, yeah, got a shit ball out of dummy half and had to rush his kick. Correct. Well, there was like you're probably too busy organising the show, Josh. But I did mention one that Appy. Oh, did sorry. Work. Well, he did. You know, I don't listen. That's all right. Well, yeah, I, I babble on too much, so I don't blame you switching off. But yeah, he did one on the last tackle where where Caesar basically got held with the ball and had to drop the ball behind him because it was hmm. it was last tackle. But again, there's another moment there. You're talking about energy. Do you guys remember when Appy got had the ball at dummy half and he looked to give it to someone and no one just wanted to take the hit up and he actually had to take the hit up on his own? Like there were mm. there were moments like that in the game. You just you just think you know what's what's going on. But again, guys, I'm just trying to compare it to last year and the year before. We are a much better team than what we were. It was a totally out of character performance. We have to beat Penrith. I don't know how we're going to beat them. We just have to beat them because. The goal is to make the eight. We just can't be going through the motions for the next 20 weeks. We've got to try and make the eight. We've got to win two out of our next three. I don't think we match up well against Brisbane. We, we seem to have had a bit of success against Penrith, who might be missing Nathan Cleary and possibly Taylor May. So um, if we can bring our A game with those with, with a lot of those guys back, I'm, I'm hoping we can get up, but um, we'll see how we go. I'll, I'll just add as well, I think the other thing we... Um, we didn't really touch on tonight that I think Galvin will fix up a lot next week too, is a lot of the times we went to spread the ball, uh, those long arching plays, we we were doing it too quickly, which gave the Dragons way too much time to, to scramble over and set their line up to intercept what was coming at them from the other side of the field. And I think that being slow really stifled our attack a lot. And I think having Galvin back next week, adds a few extra dimensions there in regards to options if he sees potentially something through the line um, and things like that. And then something Wong said, Galvin makes a huge difference, but it can't be all on one kid no matter how good he is. Look, I don't think we're all putting it on him, but I don't know, Dolphins and Dragons games, if he plays, I think it would be definitely closer to winning both games with him in our attack. And it's not just the fact that he's really good. It's the fact that his replacement was pretty average. So, uh, agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. Uh, all in agreements as we look forward to Wednesday night's show, uh, we will preview the Panthers with a special guest. Let's see if this mofo I've got on our screen now will play Nathan Cleary. That is, Willie's hamstring, yeah, will he be named? I think they'll name him, maybe make it a game it time seems, decision. It seems unlikely. I heard, seems unlikely? Um, I heard rumors through the grapevine and on um, the news, Channel 7 News today, uh, that they look like they're going to give him another week's worth of rest. Oh, so they should. I heard th- All right. Um, so, yeah, we'll see the team list 4 o'clock Tuesday and we'll be live 8 30 wednesday night so thank you everyone for joining us this evening anything uh to touch on i think we're pretty much in the 103 minutes we've been live covered covered it all boys even in a loss look i was trying to fly through tonight's episode just so much to uh break down uh but yeah anything before we say good night to big dog fellas uh, i just i just hope that and I don't blame fans for not wanting to go back to Campbelltown in a fortnight, but I really hope you, you try your best to show up. And especially if there are a couple of games beforehand, you can make a day of it, get there about lunchtime and, 
and cheer the boys on. So, look, I, I really think this is a one-off performance. If we got another performance like that again in the near future, then it's going to be a really long year. And I don't expect that to happen. I've seen too many positives to just have this performance yesterday, you know, be who we are. We're, we're not that. We're better than that. We're going to get a few players back. They don't have Superman capes on, but they will make a huge difference. So uh, just just stick with the boys. Uh, you know, hopefully we, we've got to beat Penrith. I, I, I think it's going to be really hard to beat Brisbane. I think Penrith are more beatable. And then we get Bris- uh, Canterbury after that, and we've got to try and get to four and four. Uh, if we're three and five or two and six, we can start planning for 2025. Uh, as no, jo- Rob's pretty much covered everything I was going to say. Yeah, just if you can get back out to Campbelltown in a couple of weeks, um, really cheer the boys on this weekend. And yeah, I'm sure we'll see a much better, much more improved performance against the Penny Pants. Um, yeah, bring on the next game. But obviously, we've got a a preview episode on Wednesday to talk more about that one. And shouts to the few people that did say good day to us as well and told us they loved the show as well at Campbelltown. Um, yep, come say good day if you do see us. Usually the three of us will be, yeah, not holding hands, but in close proximity to each other. So if you do see us, yeah, come have, come say good day. And yeah, it's always, we just love talking oh. footy. That's why we do this. Just on that, Josh, uh, yesterday at Campbelltown was the first time I've ever been asked by someone to take a picture with them. So, oh, we awesome. didn't get it. We didn't get it. <laughs> well, Rob and I missed you out, didn't come, unfortunately. You didn't come and see Smiling Saiyan with me. Oh, <laughs> I, he did I'm message fine. me. He did message me. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, man. He was <laughs> on the hill. He was on the hill. Um, yeah. I, next one. Promise. If you're there. Smiling, saying, we'll come over on the hill. And um, good on you, As, for the man of the people you are. Stats man and the man <laughs> of the people. Right, guys. Man. See you Wednesday night. You know how we finish every single episode, boys. Go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Westlife Podcast. Please follow us at Westlife Pod on Instagram and at Twitter and facebook.com forward slash westlifepod. You can also support and take part in the show at patreon.com forward slash westlife and give us a subscribe on YouTube and turn notifications on. We'll see you again next time on another episode of the Westlife Podcast.